Once one chooses to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, stewardship is not an option. What is stewardship? Simply put, it's receiving, developing, sharing, and returning God's gifts. Stewardship is about taking responsibility for the gifts that God has given us, which is everything, and using them well. We are stewards, not owners, of the life God has entrusted to us. We are called to give back to God through our time, talents, and treasure. The spirituality of stewardship flows from authentic discipleship. This means if we claim to follow Jesus, we should be striving to live as good stewards. God has given us everything we need to go on the mission to make disciples of all nations. Our gifts are meant to be generously shared, not hoarded. Stewardship calls us to make God the priority in all areas of our lives. This is a way of living, not a temporary parish program. God never stops giving. Our opportunities to respond from the heart are endless. That's why stewardship is a way of life and a lifelong source of grace and deepening spirituality. We all receive very unique gifts, specific to us and to the personal mission God sent us on. These gifts include each minute of the day, our skills and abilities, our families, our homes, our finances, our jobs, and even our personalities and passions. With these gifts, we're called to grow and share them out of gratitude. If we hoard them or do nothing with them, we waste the gifts God has entrusted to us. Once we understand and embrace this idea, everything changes. You are called to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. Accepting this invitation to be a disciple isn't just a one-time event. It's a daily, conscious decision. This is about God's plan for your life. Did you know that when we give back to God, He multiplies our gifts? Remember when the little boy in John's Gospel offered his five barley loaves and two fish to feed the thousands? Jesus took this small offering, blessed it, multiplied it, and then fed the massive crowd, and there were leftovers. This miracle happened through the generosity of one little person. Stewardship is a lifestyle that reflects who we are and what we believe. It goes beyond the mere sharing of one's resources, but asks us to share ourselves, our time, our abilities, our ministry, and our relationships. Stewardship is really a call to be a holy people. Stewardship is the disciples' response. What is your response?
Good morning, everyone. Congratulations on the brave ones going out on this very wet Sunday morning uh, to share in this time of worship. And as we gather together, we sing our first hymn. Jesus invites his saints to gather round his board. Let's stand as we sing. Jesus invites his saints to meet around his board. Here pardoned rebels heart and hold communion with their Lord. For food he gives his flesh, calls us to drink his blood. Amazing favor, matchless grace of our descending God. Our heavenly Father calls Christ and his members one. We the young children of his love and he the firstborn son. We are but several parts of the same broken bread. One body has its several limbs, but Jesus is the hand. Let all our powers be joined, his glorious name to raise. Pleasure and love fill every mind and every voice be praised. Welcome. For those who are joining us online, you can access the order of service at our website, 4017anglican.church, and follow the links in the top right corner to online service resources. And we turn inside the front cover. The Lord be with you. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall never enter it. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The two great commandments. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. And so in a time of silence, we reflect on the condition of our relationship with God, our relationship with our neighbour, as we come to the confession. Let us then show our love for God by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we praise God as we share in singing the Gloria. On page two of our order of service, we pray the collect for this 20th Sunday of Pentecost. O God, who alone can probe the depths of the heart, you hear the prayer of the humble and justify the repentant sinner. Grant us the gift of humility that, seeing our own faults clearly, we may refrain from judging our neighbour but rely solely upon your saving grace. We make our prayer through your Son, our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you and the to of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please have a seat for the reading of Scripture. The Old Testament reading today is taken from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 23 to 32. The prophet Joel. Now, uh, we will read about God restoring fertility to the land and we'll read about the, the day of the Lord. Verse 23. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain, as before. The threshing, field, uh, the threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves, in those days I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens and on the earth, 
blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 65. We'll say it by alternate verses. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be paid, you that answer prayer. To you shall all flesh come to confess their sins. When our misdeeds prevail against us, you will purge them away. Blessed are those whom you choose to take to yourself, to dwell within your courts. We shall be filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. with terrible deeds. O God, our Saviour, you that are the hope of the ends of the earth and of the distant seas, who by your strength made fast the mountains, you that are girded with power, who still the raging of the seas, the rolling of the waves, and the tumult of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth are afraid at your wonders the dawn and the evening sing your praises. You tend the earth and water it. You make it rich and fertile. The river of God is full of water. And so, providing for the earth, you provide grain for us all. You drench its furrows. You level the ridges between. You soften it with the showers and bless its early growth. You crown the year with your goodness and the tracks where you have passed drip with fatness. The pastures of the wilderness run over, and the hills are girded with joy. The meadows are clothed with sheep, and the valleys stand so thick with corn, they shout for joy and sing. And our second reading. Thanks, Margaret. second reading this morning is from 2 Timothy chapter 4 beginning at verse 6. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defence, no one came to support to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be. Let's stand as we sing our gradual hymn. We have a gospel to proclaim. We have a gospel to proclaim. 
good news for men in all the earth, the gospel of a Savior's name we sing, his glory tell his worth, tell of his birth at Bethlehem. Not in a royal house or hall, but in a stable dark and dim the wood made flesh a light for all. Tell of his death at Calvary hated by those he came to save in lonely suffering on the cross for all he loved his life he gave tell of that glorious Easter morn Empty the tomb, for he was free. They broke the power of death and hell that we might share his victory. Now we rejoice to name him king. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. This gospel message we proclaim. We sing his glory, tell his worth. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke chapter 18 beginning at verse 15 glory to you Lord Jesus Christ people were bringing even infants to Jesus that he might touch them and when the disciples saw it they sternly ordered them not to do it but Jesus called for them and said let the children come to me and do not stop them for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honour your father and your mother. He replied, I've kept all these since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, there is still one thing lacking. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven then come follow me. But when he heard this, he became sad, for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, then who can be saved? He replied, what is impossible for mortals is possible for God. Then Peter said, look, we've left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or ch parents or children for the sake of the kingdom who will not get back very much more in this age and in the age to come eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Father, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Please have a seat. It's been said, life is full of endings and beginnings. From the time we were very small, we have experienced endings and beginnings. Our life is full of them. And it may be ending of those childhood years at home with mum to go off to school. It might be the ending of holidays in order to return to work or school. It may be the ending of childhood to enter into teenage years or the ending of teenage years to go into adulthood. It may be the ending of singleness to enter into married life. Endings and beginnings, our life is full of them. In our reading this morning from the Gospel of Luke, we hear of a certain ruler someone who was rich, coming to Jesus because he was concerned about an ending that was happening in his life and he was concerned about whether or not he would get the beginning he would like. What must I do to have eternal life, he asked. He knew that we are all mortal. But he wanted to have confidence, he wanted to have certainty that that which was hoped for by Israel was in fact going to be available to him. He wanted to receive eternal life. Anybody here like to receive eternal life? I'm presuming that you're here because that's what you want. And there's a classic old uh, evangelism question. Do you know for certain that you have eternal life? This is what this man wanted. He wanted certainty that he'd have eternal life. And Jesus points him to the commandments. Do you remember those? Jesus quotes from the, the last six of the Ten Commandments. You know the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honour your mother and father. He says, I've done that since I was a youth. So even though behaviour wise, he was confident that he had done all that was required, there is still something nagging in his heart, some uncertainty that he wanted dealt with. And Jesus knew what that nagging thing was. And so he addressed the man. He tells it as it is. There's one thing lacking. Sell all that you have and give to the poor. And then come and follow me. Beauty, the man now knows what he has to do. Did he go off joyfully? looking forward to a big garage sale or selling off his property and stocks because now I know what I have to do to gain eternal life. No, that's not how he went away. He went away very sad because Jesus was calling him to an ending that he wasn't willing to make. There was something in his life that he wanted to hang on to rather than grasp eternal life. There was something he needed to let go of. Something that was holding him back from that which he desired. One of the challenges for us as stewards is to recognize the priorities that we put in our lives. Priorities that focus on the kingdom and the values of the kingdom rather than this life. In Matthew's gospel, I think it is that Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be given to you also. 
seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There's a story told about the strategy for catching monkeys. Now, you probably, like me, have never been in a position where you've considered, how do I catch a monkey? But imagine for a moment, there's a troop of monkeys and you wanted to catch one. Running after it probably isn't going to work because they're certainly faster than me and they can climb trees and get away f much faster. How can we hang on to a monkey so that we can catch them? Well, an old trick is to take a coconut, to cut three holes in it, one the size of a monkey hand. The other two is to thread a cord through so it can be tied to a tree. You then put a monkey treat inside the coconut and sit back and wait. And sure enough, inquisitive monkeys come along, reach into the coconut, grab hold of the treat, but can't pull their hand out. You can then calmly walk up and put a rope around its neck to lead it off. It's now yours. It's quite amazing that this monkey was so close to freedom but would rather hang on to this treat and be captured rather than let it go. We can be like that too, can't we? As we think of stewardship, we need to think of what are the things that we are hanging on to that we don't want to let go, like this rich young man, that it can ultimately be getting in the way of being a good steward, getting in the way of eternal life. Some years back, when I was working in the Air Force, I had the privilege of meeting one of the early F-111 pilots. And he was sharing with me how when they learned to fly these aircraft, one of the challenging features of it was learning to use a thing called TFR, terrain following radar. This enabled these aircraft to come down to just 200 feet above the ground, flying flat out, no hands. Now, if you're out over the ocean here, that's easy. But over land, they found that there was a problem. These pilots were charging along at hundreds of kilometres an hour and there's a mountain coming up in front of you. And you've got to let go and let this machine fly you safely over the mountain. And what was happening is that they were getting in so far and the pilot's anxiety levels got a little high and they would override the controls and pull out. Keep in mind that fast jet pilots love to be in control. But they had to let go and let this thing fly at them safely over the mountains. Eventually, they learned to let go. And uh, earlier in the year, I was visiting Christine Redke, who's part of our uh, online congregation. She lives uh, east of Warwick, and she tells the story of having the uh, Air Force aircraft flying low over their valleys using TFR. Letting go and letting God. Ending something in us that the kingdom of God might be raised up. On this Stewardship Sunday, we are called to reflect on how we are making available financial resources let alone other resources, to minister the kingdom of heaven. Over these past weeks, we've thought about the way in which in things like working bees or street stalls or uh, visiting people, we are able to give of our time and talents for the benefit of the kingdom. Today, we're asked to look at a different part of our stewardship commitment. I trust all of you are able to 
uh, look on one of those. If you haven't got one of those, then there are some by the door, and there's also some pens there. And this little form we would love you to fill out, and it simply says, my stewardship commitment for the next 12 months. I acknowledge that as a follower of Jesus Christ, I am called to be a good steward in all things. I therefore commit to respond to God financially by giving X number of dollars either weekly or fortnightly. Now, there are a number of ways in which we can give our offerings. Historically, it's been passing the plate around. But things have changed considerably, particularly as a result of COVID. There is opportunity to give directly from your bank accounts to the parish bank accounts. And you can find details of that in Snapchatter. And for those who are joining us online, you can access that on our web page and the online service resources. And it's got the details there in Snapchatter about doing that direct transfer. There's also Anfin. Anfin make uh, available a thing called Parish Direct. Parish Direct has actually been around since before internet banking. It was a uh, a thing that was put in place where you authorise a direct debit from your account on a regular basis uh, to go to the parish. That's used still by a handful of people. And then there is also giving envelopes. And we have a number of people in the parish who make use of those. And the great thing of envelopes is that on weeks such as this, when we have so many people not with us because of the wet weather we trust, that they're able to put their offertory into the envelope and there it is ready for next week. And we've had some 30 people in the parish make use of that over the years. So indicate which way you would like to give and then fill out your name, address and contact details uh, and then it's a matter of folding that up and popping it into the offertory plate or sending it to the office. So in this way we make a commitment of how we will help the financial needs of the parish in the coming year. It should be said that over the past few years the parish has seen an increase in offerings and that's coming both from increased numbers of people coming to worship but also people increasing their giving. It's always amazing how uh, everybody giving a little bit more adds together to make a significant difference and over many years of ministry I've seen that time and time again the congregations are able to increase their overall giving by a regular amount. Uh, in the previous parish I was in, they were so regular in that that we could increase the, the budget for offertories by 6.3% every year. And yes, it was 03 and that's because of the, their track record of always increasing their offerings. Jesus says, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. I always wondered when I was young, how can you, why would you talk about an eye of a needle and a camel going through it? It's every possibility that what they're referring to is the kind of uh, security gate on the main gates of the cities. So you had the main gate that may be open during the day, but off to the side there was another smaller gate that had a zigzag on it. One person could get through it, but there's no way in the world you could get a camel through it. And so that's probably what Jesus is referring to here. Something very difficult. The disciple says, well, who can be saved? And these things are impossible in human thinking but we're by faith 
putting ourselves at the hand of God. Because with God, nothing is impossible. We've been thinking this year about the, keeping in mind the definition of faith. Do you remember what it is? The confidence of things unseen. The certainty of things yet to come. Our giving is a matter of faith. Stepping out, confidence that God, who knows tomorrow, he knows the future, is able to provide for us. May we be faithful stewards, expressing in our way of life, in our giving, our confidence in God's ability to give us each day the things that we need. Now to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be ascribed all might, majesty, dominion and power this day and forevermore. Amen. Would you turn with me to page 8 in our order of service as we stand and together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son. And the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. We sit or kneel. Loving God, as we come before you in prayer this day, we are mindful of the rains that have fallen and the anxiety of many concerning flooding. And we pray for your care and protection from the damaging effects of flood. We pray for the work of the police, the SES, in caring for people in the midst of flood situations. We also are thankful, Father, and for the blessing of much rain as farmers look to abundant harvests in the coming weeks. And we pray that there will indeed be an easing of rains so that the harvest may be brought in. We pray for the leaders of our nations, for our own leaders, our Prime Minister, our Premier, those who represent us from this area at the different levels of government. Guide them with your wisdom, surround them with your integrity. Lord, guide with your wisdom and power the leaders of the nations, so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust, sharing with justice the resources of the earth. Give the people of this land a spirit of unselfishness, compassion and fairness in public and private life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we uphold to you your church, praying this day for the Anglican Church in the Congo, the bishops, clergy and people as they serve you there. 
In Australia, we pray for the Diocese of Sydney, Kanisha Raphael, their Archbishop, and the Assistant Bishops, Peter Hayward, Christopher Edwards, Peter Lynn, Michael Steed, Malcolm Richards, Gary C. C. Leon Ku, for the clergy and people as they serve you in that diocese. And in our own diocese, we pray for the parish of Pittsworth on the Darling Downs, for the clergy who are caring for and supporting that congregation. Guide and encourage your people to maintain the ministry of Jesus in that place. And for ourselves, we pray your help and guidance that we may grow as good stewards of all that you entrust to us. And we pray, send out the light and truth of your gospel and bring people everywhere to know and love you. Enable those who minister among us to commend your truth by their example and teaching. May we gladly receive and obey your word. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Father, for the many days of good health we enjoy. We thank you for the abundance of resources to help us in time of need and illness. We pray that there may be better connection in the community between those in need and the resources that can help them. We pray your comforting grace on those under treatment for cancer, particularly praying for those who have been diagnosed with cancer in recent times and are still processing that news and coming to terms with the changes that lie in their lives. Particularly pray for Trish Mullen as she undergoes chemotherapy at this time. We pray your strengthening grace on Audrey Strutz as she spends time in rehab. We uphold to you others whose needs are on our hearts and pray your comforting, healing grace with them. We commend to your fatherly care, merciful God, all who are in sorrow, sickness, discouragement, or any other trouble. Give them patience and a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who minister for them and bring us all into the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Father, for the life and work of Leonard Albert Keegan. We pray your comforts on his family as they grieve his passing. We commend his soul to your care. We also uphold to you those who remember the passing of loved ones around this time in years gone by. We praise you for all your servants whose lives have honoured Christ. Encourage us by their example, so that we may run with perseverance the race that lies before us and share with them the fullness of joy in your kingdom. Merciful Father, accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Let us stand for the greeting of peace. As we come to the greeting of peace, we encourage those who are joining us online to type in a greeting. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We greet one another. That's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace, Bob. We come now to our offertory hymn. 
And as we sing, our tithes and offerings will be received. And for those who are joining us online, you can make your offering using our B Point facility. Once again, on the web page, 4017anglican.church. And on the front page, scroll down a little and you'll see B Point. Just click on that and uh, follow through the prompts there. So we sing, Father, I place into your hands. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the times that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I would be, for I know I always can trust you. Father, we love to see your face, we love to hear your voice. Father, we love to sing your praise and in your name rejoice. Father, we love to walk with you and in your presence rest, for we know we always can trust you. Father, I want to be with you and do the things you do. Father, I want to speak the words that you are speaking to. Father, I want to love the ones that you will draw to you, for I know that I am one with you. So we come to the offertory. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings as expressions of our love for you. Use them for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. And our worship continues with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, making us in your own image. 
We praise you for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who, by his death on the cross and rising to new life, offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal de deliverance for his people. Therefore, we lift our voices to praise you, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. And pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share his body and blood. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We who are many are one body in Christ, for we all share in the one bread. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. We eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim the death of the Lord. We do this until he returns. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, as we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, may we who share these gifts, be renewed by your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, there to feast at your table and join in your eternal praise. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. As we come forward to share in the sacraments, I remind you that if you prefer to receive the bread with a drop of wine on it, then please indicate that clearly as we come along with the bread. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty God, almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this sacrament of your Son's body and blood worship you in all we do, proclaim your words to all the world, and live in the power of your Spirit. We stand as we say, Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please have a seat. It's good to have John Wade back amongst us after his little incident. And we... Pray for your continued recovery. But today is special for Gail because it's her birthday. So congratulations to Gail. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> I suspect we might sing uh, later on at morning tea. 
You will see various things coming up in the life of the parish. It's uh, wonderful to see Sunday School. Welcome to those children who have come along for the first time to Sunday School. Uh, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Welcome. And uh, please continue to pray for that ministry as it grows and develops. Christmas Tree Festival is uh, sort of the next big event apart from the street stall coming up and that's on the 25th of November at uh, Bracken Ridge and at the, this stage we're looking for people to help in various ways so if you can help with stalls and homemade goods and items for sale have a talk to Di, activities and entertainments talk to Lou or myself and uh, Christmas tree contributions. What we're looking for is uh, individuals as community groups, businesses, to have a small tree that can be placed on the table and add to the decorations of the evening. Uh, there's opportunity for businesses to have business cards and other advertising about their business there. Giving envelopes are available. Uh, you'll find those uh, marked for those who are, have been using envelopes in the foyer and if you haven't had envelopes but would like a set then please email Karen in the office and she'll look after that. Our next men's breakfast is uh, next Saturday week at Brackenridge and Stafford Shepherd is going to speak to us about uh, Christianity and the law and the changing face of that. It's a fascinating topic. I'll leave you to read through other things that are there in the pew sheet. For now, let's stand as we sing our final hymn. Accept my heart this day and make it always thine that I from thee no more may stray no more from thee decline before the cross of him who died behold I prostrate fall let every sin be crucified and Christ be all in all. Anoint me with thy heavenly grace and seal me for thine own that I may see thy glorious face and worship near thy throne. Let every thought and work and word to thee be ever given. Then life shall be thy service, Lord, and death the gates of heaven. All glory to the Father be, all glory to the Son. All glory, Holy Ghost, to Thee, while endless ages run. Go now, rejoicing in the Lord your God. Fight the good fight, finish the race, keep the faith. And may God rescue you from every evil attack. May Christ Jesus reserve for you the crown of righteousness. And may the Holy Spirit flood you with grace and overflow in you with visions and dreams of glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Please join us for morning tea after the service.